Welcome to Windows Wednesdays, and today we talk about the Windows system settings, and more specifically, we're talking about privacy. Let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Zach with PC Simplest, and like we said, we are talking Windows system settings, and we are really diving in today with the privacy settings. So to get started, we're going to click on our start menu and then we're going to go on to settings. From there, you're going to see here the last two um, buttons that we have not gone over yet here are privacy and update and security. So right now we're going to talk about privacy. If you need to look back at our old videos on the other system settings, check out the other videos and you can learn a little bit more about what we've already talked about. But today we're going into privacy. So we'll click on privacy and it's going to see right off the bat we have some general privacy options here that we can change. And I'm going to basically go through these as I would normally go through them for myself. So the first thing that I'm going to do is it says let apps use my advertising ID for experiences across apps. It doesn't sound like something I want. Off. Turn on smart screen filter to check web content URLs that Windows Store apps, apps use. Not a big fan of the Windows Store. If you find yourself using a lot of the Windows Store, you may need this. On the other hand, I've seen a lot of issues with this, and that's mainly just downloading things or going to specific sites and stuff. I'm going to select off. Uh, send Microsoft info about how I write to help us improve typing and writing in the future. Off. I don't want to send Microsoft anything more than I really need to. Nothing really against Microsoft. I just don't need to send them any more data than they're already collecting to begin with. So, moving on. Uh, last website provide locally relevant content by accessing my language list. Whatever. Access my language list. I speak English. That's it. Meh. Anyway, uh, manage my Microsoft advertising other personali personalization info. If that's something that you really want to dive into, you can click on that and it'll take you to a different website and you can look into different things that Microsoft offers as far, far as advertising and personalization info and managing it, like it says. Anyway, the next thing that we're going to go to is location. And uh, basically, uh, whoever signs in the device can change their location settings. If you really wanted to see where you're at location-wise, you can you know make those changes. Basically, it's saying it's going to look at your ISP generally um, and figure out, like, the best location that it can and kind of pinpoint where you're at so it'll be relevant in a lot of search results and stuff like that so you can leave that on or you can uncheck it it's really up to you um, it doesn't really bother me much so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it on that's fine uh, location history obviously here you can clear that and uh, choose apps that can use your location so this might be something that you want to look into um, a little bit further but we can go over it quickly there's just you know a couple things like the weather app if you use the MSN weather you might want to tick that on because then it'll use your location to give you the best uh, weather results so if you actually go on vacation with your computer say you have a laptop it will use your location services wherever it's talking to you to give you your weather based on your location pretty self-explanatory um, anyway uh, same thing with your search and stuff like that. Windows camera, you take a picture, it's going to use your location, geotagging, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Anyway, th these are just uh, things that you can kind of look at and go over and, you know, check one by one. Next thing we'll go to is camera. If you have a webcam set up, if you have a built-in webcam on your laptop, this will come into play here with your privacy. And it says, let apps use my camera. So you could turn this off. So basically, if you had a lot of different applications out here that would use your camera, you could say, I don't want Skype to use my camera. I don't know why, whatever. You don't want Microsoft Edge to use your camera. We could check that. We don't want OneNote. We don't want Twitter to use my camera. You're disabling all of those. So it's a privacy setting for you and say you had younger kids and you really have your things on lockdown and you don't want them to ever access that camera. Here's where you can go and turn it off. So that's a pretty cool setting that you have there. So again, you can look at it a little bit further. If you have questions, obviously hit me up. Uh, now going to the microphone, let apps use the microphone. That's the same thing. Uh, say you don't want Skype to use your microphone or whatever, you could take it off or you never want your microphone. You could always just take it off completely and no apps will use your microphone. So if you're worried about privacy settings with that, here's where you find it. 
Moving on to the speech inking and typing, and it says getting to know you. And basically, if you read this really quick, it says Windows and Cortona uh, can get to know your voice and writing to make better suggestions for you. Uh, we'll collect info like contacts, recent calendar events, speech and handwriting patterns, and typing history. That sounds like innovation of privacy. So I'm going to say, stop getting to know me. Turn off. Don't get to know me. I don't want you to know me like that. That's not what I'm using you for. You, on the other hand, might find that use you know, that feature useful. Um, it'll auto, you know, basically kind of auto fill in things for you in a way or provide better results for you based on everything that you've ever searched for or context that you have, stuff like that. So it could be very useful to somebody, um, but not for me. I value my privacy just as you should value your privacy when you're on a computer and you're in the world wide web. So anyway, I'm going to say don't get to know me. And that choice is up to you, of course. And here we go, manage cloud info, go to Bing and manage personal info for all your devices. So you can go out to the Bing and manage all that info for there for the cloud if you're using Bing as your search engine and you're signed in and all that fun stuff. And you can learn more about speech, typing, settings, and blah, blah, blah. So that's stuff that you really need to dive into on your own because there's really, it's just so much to go over. If you have questions, of course, hit me up in the comments and we'll do something about it and get some answers for you. Anyway, we're going to go on to uh, account info. And it says, let apps access my name, picture, and other account info. Why? They just want so much information. And I'm not in a position that I really want to give them all of that information. They're going to get it anyway somehow, I'm sure. That's what happens. But anyway, um, I, I don't want apps to access my name, picture, and other account info. Nah, take it off. And if I had different apps that would let me, uh, you know, choose what whatever they want to sync. If you use the Microsoft Store, this stuff really comes into play uh, because you when you download the apps and stuff from the micro Microsoft Store, it all comes into play with the account info and some of these other settings that we went over. So just keep that in mind. Contacts. Uh, choose apps that can access contacts. I don't have any a a um, contacts stored on my computer in any way whatsoever. I don't like doing that. And again, it's a personal preference, but if you use Exchange, Outlook, uh, stuff like that, or, you know, whatever, the Outlook.com, stuff like that, that would actually store your contacts to your computer um, from using the actual mail option in uh, the Windows. And we'll do a video on that someday. But anyway, you can choose to um, have different apps that you download, of course, you know, um, access those contacts for whatever reason. So anyway, that's, that's contacts for you. Calendar, that's going to be pretty much the same thing. If you use, like I said, the Outlook Web or whatever mail client that you have installed and you want it to access the calendar, again, you know, that's up to you. That's your choice. Messaging. Uh, so that's pretty cool that they offer that now is uh, if you have some kind of messaging app that you can download through the Microsoft Store, you can set it here to let apps read or send text messages. So that sounds like a video I'm going to have to do. Stay tuned for that one. Uh, next one we have radios. Some apps use radios like Bluetooth, blah, blah, blah. Again, you need an app for that. So Microsoft Store, we're gonna, it sounds like I'll be doing a video on the Microsoft Store and the apps. So stay tuned for that. It's a lot of stay tuned for that, but if you've already used uh, some apps from the Microsoft Store and you're curious about some of the settings that you can set up for this, we're going over that right now. Kind of. Anyway, uh, other devices. So sync with devices is something that, again, you're going to have to play with if you have apps on your mobile devices and on your computer that are relatively the same. And uh, you can automatically share and sync info with the wireless devices. And you can actually set up which apps you want to do that. And this is basically saying, do you automatically want it to share and sync info with wireless devices? Yes or no. And that's basically your computer talking to the wireless devices. Do you want that to happen? So, that's that. Use trusted devices. And here we have examples, Xbox One, TVs, projector. So the Cruiser Glide here is actually a flash drive that I had plugged into my computer. And it ba basically, from here, I can say, do I want apps to um, use this flash drive? And you can set up kind of some custom settings here saying yes or no. I don't want apps to use my flash drive. So, for instance, let's say... Dropbox. If you want 
it, it should have an option here. Do you want Dropbox to use this flash drive for anything? Tick no if you don't want it to use it. There you go. So you'll have to basically play with these settings as you utilize some of the different apps and stuff and different devices they actually plug in to your computer. So you're going to have to play around with that a little bit. But of course, if you have any type of questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you uh, at any point in time that I can. And let's see, feedback and diagnosis. Diagnostics, sorry. Uh, Windows should ask for my feedback. Automatically recommended. I don't want to give feedback. When I'm on a computer, I'm I'm doing I'm business. It's all business. Nothing but business. I don't have time to give you feedback. Get out of here, Windows. I don't want to give you feedback. Uh, diagnostic and usage data. Send your uh, device data to Microsoft. Full recommended. Again, uh, it's not something that I want to do, and I'm just going to set that to basic. I don't really want to send usage data and diagnostic info, and that usually the better helps Microsoft with you know troubleshooting a lot of different things but at the same time you're also sending out data to Microsoft in some way form or another so again that's up to you you know you can do it that's not too terrible I mean maybe it'll help them in some way but you never know YOLO um, anyway uh, we'll go on to background apps and let's see let's apps run in the background choose which apps can receive info send notifications and stay up to date even when you're not using them pretty self-explanatory right so if you have an alarm clock, you can turn that off. If you never want to use it, you never wanted to sync anything. If you have some kind of syncing with your alarm clocks and calendars and stuff like that, you can choose to turn these off in Windows 10 so you don't get notifications on your actual computer. And you leave that to maybe another device to handle. So again here, basically for me, I would pretty much say off to all of these. And that's, again, my personal... My personal preference I uh, don't want any apps to run in the background ever for any reason because if I'm not using it there's really no reason for it to run in the background again this might be different for you you may have some type of tool application or whatever that has to run in the background all the time maybe you have a background or a backup program that runs in the background because it's backing up your data that's a different case for you so you really have to go through this list and decide what you actually want to run in the background and what you don't. If you have questions about that, hit me up below, of course, and I'll be happy to answer anything I can for you. And basically, this has been a long video just on privacy because privacy is a big deal nowadays. So if you have any comments, suggestions, anything at all relevant to share, leave a comment below, and I'm happy to get back with you any time that I possibly can. As always, please like, and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. And you have a fantastic and amazing day. Thanks for watching. Take care.